What's up guys? So today we are doing an install of an S-Bar Airtronics S2 D2L. This is a bunk heater. When we first bought our truck, we did not have a heater installed. We opted for the rooftop air conditioner and we did not get the S-Bar when we bought the truck. We, we, we talked about, oh, we'll get it later, we'll get it later, we'll get it later. We never got it. Three years later. Three. We said, oh, <laughs> <laughs> Almost three years, yeah. Um, this is what we've been using for heat for the longest. This is a, a Dyson hot plus cool fan. This thing works really good until temperatures get below like 20, 25 degrees. It also does not work when the truck's running down the road. And it doesn't work when the truck's running down the road. Not having heat back here for a while has been rough on us. Now, we do have an HVAC system back here that does have heat for when the truck is running down the road. But about a year ago, a part on it broke and it started leaking coolant into the sleeper. So Jason bypassed that system because the part that they use was what, it's like a plastic part? To... It's a plastic uh, manifold part. It's not a good system. Yeah. And instead of fixing it and uh, letting it break again in the future, we decided not to use it. I just don't like the idea of coolant lines coming up in into the sleeper part because if that part ever breaks, we're talking coolant all over the sleeper floor, uh, that stink does not go away and it's hard to clean and it's, it's very hard slimy. to clean so and um, we knew we we were planning on getting an s-bar anyway right we just we just put it off put it off put it <laughs> off put it off now the air conditioner part works oh yeah just the heater part doesn't, yeah so. yeah this is going to be our solution for fixing uh not having any heat back there because you can use this while running down the road or when you're parked it runs on your off your batteries and my understanding and from everybody I've talked to, this thing will run all night just on your batteries alone. And then of course we have the APU to uh, jump in and kick in if uh, the batteries need to be charged. We are very gracious to SBAR of Michigan for sending us this. Heather has been wanting one forever. We are in Indianapolis right now and it is, what's the oh temperature? Oh gosh, it's, it's like, like it feels like uh, 17 degrees 17 out. degrees out. It's, like it's really cold. Tonight's going to be really cold. It was really cold last night. This is going to keep us warm tonight. So we are going to get this installed. And I love doing install stuff with you guys because why not save the money and then install it yourself? And I figured, uh, I asked them, hey, can you send us one and so we can do the install ourselves? And they've been real helpful. I have tech support uh, on standby letting them know we're installing it today. And if I need any help to give them a call. So we are going to open it up, see what's in the box, and get to installing it. One thing to add, if... You are all are not, what is it, technically inclined or Mechan mechanically inclined, like Jason is. Jason loves doing this kind of stuff. And yeah. like like you said, you know, if you can do it yourself and save money, why not? But if you don't feel comfortable doing it, SBAR of Michigan will install this for you as, as well. Of Absolutely. course, it's going to cost you for them to install it. Absolutely. But, you know, that's just some great information to know that if you are wanting one, they will install it as well. So... Let's open it up and see what we got. So this is gonna be how we get fuel to the system. Now they did send us another one to work on our tank. So we will not be using this kit, but basically this screws down into your tank and then you have your fuel line and it's your pickup tube. And I'll show you the, the extra part they sent us that's gonna work for our tank so we can mount it on this side. This right here is gonna be the unit. Set this off to the side. <coughs> and then they send you a bunch of uh, stuff for the install. Warning, who needs warnings? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, warning, read before installing heater. We will definitely give this a read. One thing to note that this is a whole kit that you can actually order on their website, sbarparts.com. We'll leave a link to their website down in the description. This is the newest model that's going to work with the diesel because they do have a, a gas one too for vans. They right? do have a gas one and, a, and they also have an engine heater. 
Yeah, and we did an interview with Aaron, who works for SBAR, and when we were at the expo this year, I'll link it up above here if you haven't seen that video. This is something new to uh, SBAR. This is called the Easy Start Pro. This is the, gonna be the control unit that you use that turns your heater on and off. It's much more advanced than the older ones. Stick that right there so you can see. And here we have some plastic fuel line. Uh, two millimeter So tons of fuel line and we're not gonna need all of this. So we'll be able to cut it down This is gonna be our mounting plate and it comes with some screws to mount it uh, onto the floor underneath this seat This is gonna be for holding our fuel pump So this is gonna be mounted on the outside up on the frame and it has like a rubber kind of mounting to kind of minimize vibration now this looks very, very intimidating. <laughs> uh, we got your, your main harness, bunch of wiring harnesses that um, get plugged into certain devices. And we'll go over all this stuff as we're doing it. Um, this is your vent, vent thing that comes out down here. I don't know if we'll use this or if we'll use the existing one. Um, it does look like it has some fins. So we can kind of, we may use this because this will allow us to directionally aim the heat coming out this way. Then we got some uh, intake tube. Whoop, wait. Uh, oh, this is for routing our, the air coming out of the, the heater to the vent. And then I'll have to look up which one is which, but one is exhaust and one is intakes that these will go out underneath under the sleeper so the exhaust from the the burner goes out under the sleeper and away from the truck they also provide you a ton of zip ties i actually uh, grabbed our zip ties not knowing this was in here so won't even have to use our zip ties and a bunch of miscellaneous nuts and bolts that we will figure out which go to which along the way and a couple other mounting brackets uh hose clamps and then this goes on the end this is where the, uh, the heat comes out of on this piece so let's uh get to it one more thing before we get started i want to show you this pickup tube they sent to us now our fuel tank has a single hole and this is what's going to screw down into that hole well currently we have what's a, what's called a vent tube coming off that tank uh, so what we'll do is here's our fuel line our fuel line will connect to this and it go if you probably can't see down in there but what it has is a piece that goes in and then back out and goes all the way down this will be our fuel pickup line and i'll screw that into the top of the tank where our vent tube is and then i'll take our vent tube and screw it into the top of this this is open inside of here and and passes through right there so that will be our vent tube for the tank and which will connect and i'll show you guys that out there so that's the difference between the two this is for just a single pickup tube if you already have a separate uh hole in the top of the tank for it this is to make two connection out of the single hole so this is pretty awesome all right now this is the unit that uh, came in the units box and also the fuel pump that was inside with this unit now this is going to be your air intake then our air, this is where the hot air blows out of we have a small rubber ceiling gasket on the bottom here that we will basically use as a template for when we're mounting and i'll show you when we get to mounting this i'm just going to leave it right there so when i put it down i'll pull it off like that and so I'll have my template so I can mark where I need to drill my holes. One thing I want to show you on here, they are labeled. You got your uh, exhaust and then you got your intake. So this is where air gets sucked in through the bottom and this is where your exhaust comes out of. And this right here is going to be your fuel line. All right, so we're using this rubber gasket here as a template and we're going to mark all these holes that we need to drill out. Now, even though we're working with a black floor and black Sharpie, we should still be able to see where we're drilling at. Go ahead and lift that up. Now, one thing you want to make sure of 
is you don't get one of these rails. So if you see, here's that rail right there, puts it right about here, and we got it mounting right there. So we're right next to the frame rail of the sleeper. So now we're gonna go ahead and drill these holes. So we are gonna find the one inch drill hole, which I got a bunch of them here. So my smallest one is one and one and a quarter. Now, instead of using that hole, I'm gonna use one of these. This is not meant for metal, but it's just going down through aluminum. So we should be able to at least get the two holes we need. This is exactly one inch. So this should give us the right diameter. The reason I don't wanna use the one and a half inch or one and a quarter is you got these mounting screws on each side of the holes. So if I went too wide, it might cut over into those mounting screws. So we're gonna try this uh, drill bit. It's probably gonna tear it up, but I've been wanting to get new drill bits anyway for a while. Well, let's uh, drill some holes. All right, moment of truth. Now we are drilling the mounting holes. Now we are gonna be drilling the fuel tube hole. This uh, DeWalt with the light on it sure does help. We are mounting this on the driver's side of the sleeper because that's where we have the most open room to put it. There is also a hole already down here, if you can see, that has a vent already ready to go. All we have to do is attach a vent tube to that if we want to use that, or we can use the one that's provided with the S-bar. Now we're going to put this mounting seal back on and test our fit, make sure we got our holes nice and tight. Then we'll be heading outside to getting everything tightened up. All right, so if you, as you can see, we had to clear out a lot of our uh, spray foam that was in there. We've tightened down, there's four mounting bolts. So it, we got it nice and tight and mounted right now. Let me see if I can show those mounting bolts in there. Next, what we're gonna do is install the intake. And the intake has an arrow on it. You may not be able to see it here, but we showed you that earlier. But the intake is slightly bigger than the exhaust. So I'm gonna mount that up right now. Your intake is gonna be your black hose. We're gonna put our hose clamp on first. And then we're gonna slide that up. We wanna make sure to put this screw on the opposite side of our fuel line because we'll be needing to mount uh, a clamp on the fuel line as well. All right. Give that a little snug tug there, make sure it's nice and tight. Now we're gonna wanna mount this where it's pointing downward. We don't want any high points because we don't want water getting up in this hole and then collecting like right there. All right, so we're gonna mount, get this a little mounted along this rail here. We're not gonna go too tight because we don't want to put any bends in this. Next, I'm gonna add another zip tie to come along with this, uh, these. Right there. All right, so what I've decided to do is the intake's right there. I'm gonna put a little hole right here. Move that out of the way so I don't punch a hole in it. Put that back there. 
that way it's tucked up out of the way and it's pointing backwards up under the rail so it gets air coming from there so we don't have no low points so that should be good on the intake and of course I'll cut all these little Just give it a cleaner install. Next, we're gonna grab our exhaust line. All right, next we're gonna be installing the exhaust line. We're gonna be using the silver hose with this metal uh, clamp here. We're just gonna slide this up over that. Put our metal clamp up there. Nice and tight. Now we wanna be really careful where we route this because this does get really hot. So I'm gonna come over this way a little bit away from all my electrical cables. It comes with these uh, C-clamps and we're gonna use a self-tapping screw to put it up in the frame rail here. All right, now we're just gonna work our way back. So we are going to cut off a little bit of uh, the hose here, which you can do with a knife. Boom! Exhaust installed. Now it's time for the fuel line. Alright, so next we got to remove this so we can get our pickup tube installed. This is coming out. This is going in and then we'll put this, uh, it's a pressure relief for pressure tube and we'll install that back on the top of this one. So I'm gonna get this pulled out. Hopefully without damaging anything. It's gonna be the fun part. We gotta take, the, take this black fitting off and see if we're able to get this down in there. May have to bend this a little, just a little bit. There we go. Now, I do want to put a little bit of Teflon tape on that to make sure it stays sealed when I uh, get that back up in. Or as I like to call it, plumber's tape. Go ahead and unplug that to get it out of the way. And right there should be good. So then it's sticking backwards where we're gonna be mounting the fuel pump. All right, I added a little bit of Teflon tape to the, to the vent tube as well. All right, next we're gonna install the pump. All right, now this part right here is your fuel pump. Uh, and it gives you an indication of which direction the fuel will be flowing right here on this little plug. This is going to be our power plug for the fuel line. I've already put it inside this rubber bracket here. Nice strong rubber bracket. Um, what we're going to do is the kit comes with this little mounting bracket here. So we're going to mount the fuel pump to this mounting bracket by the one of the screws that are provided stick a washer on the other side and put the nut on now what this is going to do is we're going to mount this to the frame of the truck with one of the existing bolts we're going to put uh take one of the bolts off the frame of the truck and use this hole right here to mount the bracket now when we mount it, we want the pump to be at this angle. So when we put this 
bracket on the frame, we'll make sure this is straight up and down, and that will give us the angle that's required by the fuel pump to be able to work the best. Here's a bunch of our fuel line though, and we're gonna get this all prepped up and ready inside because it's cold as tarnations outside. But I'm gonna tighten this up real quick, and then we'll get our fuel line ready. So we have uh, some fuel splicer line right here, these uh, hoses. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect one of these to the end of the fuel pump and attach it with these hose clamps. Next, we're gonna attach another hose clamp, put that on there. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed some of this down into this hole. One thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my hose cutter to get a nice clean cut on there. So then it's a nice, even, flat, squared uh, cut and perfectly leaves enough, doesn't damage the hole at all. So you can pick, pick one of these up at Home Depot for like 10 bucks. I got the Husky brand because I'm Husky. <laughs> that ain't no lie. Now I'm gonna go ahead and install this part right here. Tuck that in there. I'm gonna slide this down over that. Now you wanna go as far down until you hit the fuel line. The metal part of the fuel pump. Yeah, the metal part of the fuel pump. Thank you, my love. That's why I'm the handy assistant. Now I did go out and measure to see how much line I was going to need because trying to push it into this line was pretty hard uh, while I was doing that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and slide the second clamp over and we're going to put this and this is going to hold this line inside there. Now like I said before, you want to make sure you push this all the way down in until it connects with the metal part of the pump. Now you want to make sure to tighten these all the way down until this closes up together like both of these are. Now we're going to go outside and get this mounted and then this fuel line routed to the pickup tube. So I'm going to take this bolt off of this frame here. I'll probably have to get around from the backside too, but we busted out the big guns to see if we can get this. I'm gonna have to get around on the back side and hold the bolt and have Heather do, uh, do the big guns. So what we did is we removed this bolt, slid this bracket over it, then tightened up that bolt on it again. And here we got our fuel pump mounted. Now we gotta run our fuel line and we gotta do the same thing as we did on that with the rubber connector. So we're gonna connect that and we'll show you what it looks like. We got the fuel pump connected to the fuel tank. Now what we're doing is we're adding another one of those black splicer hoses and we're getting ready to add our fuel hose and run it over to where we have it mounted under the, the sleeper. We are starting to lose daylight so I'm gonna try to knock this out. If I'm not able to get everything, we'll come back and show you tomorrow or another day and put it into this video and make sure you guys see what we're doing. But basically utilizing these, these little clamps and running the fuel line over there. All the way to the end. Got that all the way tight. All right, now comes the fun part. It is completely dark out. We barely made it with uh, with the sunlight out, and the GoPro died. So we <laughs> we are starting with the wiring. We can't. We got two bundles of wires here. This small wire, which has two wires to it, we need to run outside to that the fuel pump. So I'm gonna have to drill one more hole into the ground over here into the floor into the floor under the next to the the s bar unit and i have to run two cables down through there 
This is our main harness. This plugs into the S-bar unit and then we have a bunch of things that come off of it. Uh, this is just a 20 amp fuse. And we labeled these so we know what they're for. Yep, this, this one goes to the easy start, which uh, there's a trick to it. If you see there's a wire on the end of this, I'll have to take this off of this plug and plug it into the, the control unit somehow. I haven't looked at the control unit yet, but then we got this goes to our this will plug into our fuel line so if you notice on one end this is what plugs into the fuel pump but then they leave the other end without a plug on it so it's easier to fish through up through the floor and i'll have to install one of the plugs that came with the unit and I'll show you guys when we get to that but so I'm gonna have to run go I'm gonna go outside plug this well actually I'm gonna drill a hole first uh, I'm gonna use the same size drill bit uh, but I'm gonna use a half inch this time instead of a one inch so that should give me enough room to fit both of these wires down through there we probably will stop and pick up some great stuff so I could fill those holes back in so it, it, we don't get draft or water that comes up through there. So what I'm going to do first is we're going to drill a hole off to the side where we can uh, run these cables through. And then we're going to run the fuel pump through it and then the power down through it. So let's do that. So I'm going to drill on this side since this is going to be the air intake. We want to keep any type of wiring away from the the hot air out out. So you know what? I might go down right here next to the unit. All right. So this is the fuel pump line. I cut off a bunch of excess that we just didn't need. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prepare this to put a connector on the end of this. And I'll show you what that connector looks like here. We have to turn this into the plug. Uh, we have two green wires that are not labeled either or, so what we have to do is strip this wire back and put these cables on them or these connectors and then once we have these connectors on the ends of these wires we're gonna whoops slide them into the end of this and basically convert it into a plug i always like to twist the ends up just to make it a little bit cleaner there then if you can see we have two crimpers we want this back one to crimp around the sheathed wire part and then this one crimps around the wire so right about there actually i might be able to cut a little bit off of this just a tiny bit. There we go. All right, my handy assistants pointed out that I forgot to put these on first. These are the, the rubber seals that will seal it once it gets plugged into the back of this. So I got these slid on, slid down a little bit. And we are trying to crimp this down. All right, we got that crimped down onto the wire. And then we will crimp down these over the cabling. And I think these things are called Deutsch connectors. I have actually never heard of that. There we go. Now we just got to do the other side. All right, so now once we got these crimped down on there, we're going to slide these into this. 
and you should hear a snap once they're in place. Got them both clicked in. Gonna slide our rubber grommets down into place. Then you wanna make sure you use this little wire locker to lock them in. And it keeps the cables spread apart there and good to go on that. Now this is ready to plug into the harness that we have coming off the S-Bar heater. Yep. All right. Now we do have quite a bit of, still a lot of bit of excess wire, which I don't mind. Right here, we have six cables. I have, this is coming off the, the wire harness. I have cut this down extremely short because we are not gonna be using any of this, but there will be, these red ones do have power to them. So we want, I wanna tape them up so they're not bumping up against stuff or anything or touching each other or. I'm just gonna put a little bit of electrical tape over the ends of each one and then I'll tape them all together. I'll go ahead and do that and I'll show you what I do at the end. I got each tip of the wire uh, wrapped with some aluminum or electrical tape and then I'm just gonna wrap it with all of it together so it's not getting caught or anything. Just like that. And that is done. We don't need to do anything with that. This connector right here is will go to our controller. Now we need to make sure we keep this because we're going to be using this this part on the end of the controller, but this will plug into the controller. So, let's get the controller out and check out what that's got what we got to do with that. Now we are getting ready to connect the controller. Now this is the wire harness that comes off the S-Bar unit. Um, we are gonna take this off, set that aside. We have to do another connector, put all these wires inside this plug so we can plug this harness, these wires into this connector right here. So it's gonna go like that. Now, this end goes to the unit. Now you see there's two of them. The part we took off this that has a wire on the end that came off this, which is from the control unit, now goes on this to cover this up. And basically what this does is tells the unit it's a loop. It does a loop and it tells uh, the unit that this is the end of it. This is the end, and then this can plugs into the back or the wiring of the control harness right there. And then we'll have to figure out a place where we're gonna mount this. But what I'm gonna do right now is I got some more Deutsch, Deutsch connectors that I'll have to connect to the end of these wires to be able to connect this to the control, uh, to the unit coming off of the S-Bar unit. So I'm gonna get these uh, connected in. One thing I'll have to make sure is you got red, blue, black, blue, and a brown. When I hook these cables up to this connector, I need to make sure when it plugs in, it will correspond with these cables. As long as those colors match on this side, then it should work fine. So I'm gonna get these uh, connected up and we'll go from there. For the record, I would just like to state that I am not a big fan of Deutsch connectors, but we got it in there. It was not pretty, but we got it to match up and I got them nice and tight. So they shouldn't be having no wires come out or nothing and 
we are good to go to connect in there but i don't want to connect yet because we need to run all this wire from wherever we want to mount the the control unit at so that's what we need to figure out next and i probably could have cut off some of this matter of fact i should have cut some of this off but it's already said and done i'm gonna go ahead and just uh tangle up the wire somewhere out of the way and make sure it's nice and clean and tidy but we need to figure out where we're going to mount it where you want to mount it woman um i don't know where it's going to be the easiest place to mount it <laughs> All right, so we have come to the consensus. We are going to put the controller right here. Let me show you what it looks like. I know Jason probably showed you it a little bit already, but this is what the controller looks like. We're gonna remove this. This is the bracket to our old Fantastic fan that we had. When we got this truck, we took out the, the Fantastic fan that was in it and put one with a cover that comes up and down with it. So, we don't even need this here. We just left it here so there wouldn't be holes there. So we're going to remove that and we're going to put the controller right here. So that way all the controls for everything are all here together. And I think that'll be a good spot for it. We're just going to have to run the wires from the unit around under the bunk in the back. All the way around, around the back. Into here. Over down under that and then up and through there. And so it is a good thing that Jason didn't cut all the excess wire because we're probably going to need it <laughs> to, to run it. So yeah. Yeah. we are going to start working on that. Just making a hole right there. Boom. All right, so we got the cable ran all the way around behind the bed, under the bunk, up through some holes, already existing holes in the, the bolt sleeper here. We got our control unit mounted, which came with a drilling template that we used. So we set that up there and we drilled two holes, one six millimeter and one 12 millimeter. 12 millimeters for your wires, uh, six millimeters for the mounting plate and then it snaps right onto that mounting plate now all we got to do is plug up we have our loop plug plugged into the end of this one cut these off so they're not dangling around and getting caught on things inside there we wound this extra cable up over here because it will be more uh, less out of more out of the less out of the way more more out of the way more out of the way over there now we got our wires hanging back back here i just got to plug in so find our cable chug it on down here and of course it's tangled up in other <laughs> wires there all we the are wires for the other controls. all the wires for the other controls now we're going to plug this in there bada bing bada boom this controller is for if you have two units, like we showed in our SBAR video at the Expedite Expo, they also make a coolant heater that you can tie into your coolant lines and it warms your, your engine up and keeps your engine warm for you or warms it up like an hour before you get to your truck because you can set this stuff all on timers and set it to start and stop when, uh, at certain times so you you can what this plug right here is for is if you have that engine block heater but we don't have that so we're we're not gonna we're just gonna leave that out of the way we're gonna tuck that back there not in the drawer preferably our sleeper is a disaster right now. It is. Look at it, we got everything spread <laughs> everywhere. Oh my gosh. That's connected. Fuel pump's connected. By the way, since we had to do the electrical for the fuel pump outside after it got dark, we are going to insert a clip here just to show you how we wired that. And we'll show you how we connected to the battery box outside. Still got to do that. We need power. That's the easy part, though. 
So we're going to go do that right now in the dark. But, but we'll, you'll see. we'll, show, you, we'll you. show you what we did next. All right, so we are about a week later now. We got everything wired and installed. Um, I have to say, the wiring was quite intimidating, but looking back on it now, it, um, it was extremely easy. The hardest part was adding all those little uh, connectors on the end of each wire and then plugging it, putting all those wires into uh, the plug to, to make it a uh, pluggable <laughs> I guess you would say I'm no expert you know I'm just a guy that wants to do it myself but I wanted to go over how we connected to the the battery box since that was the very last thing we did and we were doing that in the dark so I'm gonna open up this battery box and I'll show you how we connected it first so let, let's start with the wiring for the fuel fuel pump we plugged that in, then we ran the wire all the way back up here. I got it loosely zip tied up here along with the fuel line. And we went up and I drilled a secondary hole right next to the unit to come down. And I went up through that hole and we also used that hole to come down with the power, the positive and negative that were connected to the battery box. So let me get this open real quick. All right, so here's our cable. This is our positive and negative that we connected. I connected the positive right here and I did have to add the connector to it. So actually, no, 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 not on this part. This part was already wired and uh, this uh, terminal was already connected to the wire. What I had to do was on this right here, this was not connected inside this little fuse panel thing. So what I had to do was crimp down the connector onto the wire, feed it in through there, and then plug in the, the fuse panel. And then I connected the negative over here. So we got a positive right here, negative over here. We have not had no problems. The wires are nice and ran out of the way. That was a, a really easy part. It was hard to do it in the dark. Um, we have flashlights and my headlamp and everything, but it was really easy to do. One thing you absolutely want to make sure you do when you're installing the fuel lines is these little black tubes right here. You want to, you make sure you use these even on this side of the fuel pump. Um, because if you use too big of a fuel line, the fuel pump's going to have a uh, struggle uh, with pumping up fuel. And that's why they supply you with this real thin fuel line right here. Also, when you're pushing this in into this black hose, you want to push it in all the way until it can, uh, pushes up against the other side. If you leave any kind of gap in there, it's going to create a big, big hole, which could uh, hinder the, the flow of the fuel. And it could get air bubbles. You can get air bubbles. Now, small, tiny air bubbles is normal, but if you have a bunch of big air bubbles, most likely you have a gap in between this and your uh, where the fuel pump. And that goes all along the fuel line. Even over here, right here, and then up under there, under the unit where it's uh, connected to. And also, one thing I would do is connect your fuel line first before you connect your exhaust and your uh, intake. It's just going to give you more room to connect the, the fuel line in there. And then it's a lot easier to connect the exhaust and the intake line. You can see where the fuel line's connected right there. And having the exhaust and the intake uh, made it a little bit difficult to get the fuel line connected. So connecting that first will definitely make it a lot easier. Right here is where I drew, drilled the hole to come up and go down with the fuel and the, the power for the battery box. We left a bunch of extra cable right back here. Sorry, we got a bunch of stuff. We kept all our extra cable and just wound it up and zip tied it up over here out of the way. Back through here is where we ran the cable to get onto the other side to be able to mount the the control unit over with all the other electronics. And right here is where we hooked up that vent tube. So you got your intake going in right there. And then we got the vent tube going up and then into the sleeper right there. So one thing we're gonna do inside of here is we're gonna find some metal L brackets that we can mount to the floor 
alongside the unit so we don't have any of our supplies and trucking stuff uh, falling over into it we haven't had a problem yet but it could always be a problem you know we go go through some crazy truck stops sometimes with a lot of potholes and um, having something fall over on it and sitting on it don't want it melting or you know we keep extra bottles of water back here and that's the last thing we need is it leaning up against it melting and then this whole thing leaking out everywhere when we do that i'll definitely share a video of how we do that um it, it should be real easy because we have an aluminum floor i'll use some self-tapping screws and probably do uh four and and we're talking just like an l bracket you know something like that so i can mount right here and then this part should be able to protect from anything falling onto it yes. So we are really super excited to have this S-Bar and we want to thank sbarparts.com and S-Bar of Michigan for sending this to us. Yeah. They found out we didn't have a heater and they were nice enough to offer to send us one. Yep, yep. We, we wanted to do a video kind of yeah. sharing uh, what a great product they have. Um, I've said it before. From the beginning, from day one that I started doing expediting, S Bar of Michigan has been the place that everybody talked about. You know, I would be reading through forums and I would see uh, titles, uh, problem with S Bar. I'm like, what's an S Bar? You know, <laughs> I didn't know what that was. I didn't know what it was. And I would go reading through these things and everybody would always recommend go check out S Bar of Michigan to get parts or get, get it fixed. Uh, they're the experts. They know how to get stuff done. And so I've, that's that's the one company I've always known ever since day one that I've been doing expediting and researching about it, you know, so. Now, that being said, we wanted to let you know, it took us probably a good 10 hours to get this thing installed and up and running. It did. Now, it took us a little bit extra time because we were filming the process and that makes it go a little bit slower. And it was 20 degrees outside. Yeah, and but we did have um, one of their technicians on standby. We were able to call if we had any issues, which yep. Jason did have to ask a few questions. Yep. But this is definitely something that you can do on your own if you're mechanically inclined. Honestly, I mean, yeah, it's really not a hard process. No. It's really intimidating when you start opening up the box and all those parts and wires and everything, but really you have three wires you got your positive and negative that goes to the battery you got your wire going to the fuel pump and then you got your wire going to the control unit and that was it you know mm -hmm. sure I had to do some extra connectors and making those plugs but I mean they do that so you're able to feed those wires through small holes and not having to drill big holes out to be able to get the entire plug through so yeah the thing I was <laughs> most concerned about is hooking up the fuel system but actually that was the most easiest process it was especially it really was. with that um, other pickup tube that they sent us and we'll link these parts we'll link the the whole kit that we got and that pickup tube yep. down below yep. so that if you're interested you can go check that out we don't make any money off of it just nope, sharing nope. the info with you guys yep. for anybody who's interested and the uh, real quick the unit we got is uh it comes with an auto regulator for high altitudes um, because the fuel has to be adjusted in order for it to work properly when you get into higher altitudes. So the unit we got, it, it has that already in it. So um, if you have an older unit, you can add that on. It's a it's an add-on that you can get and you can order that from them at sbarparts.com. Mm -hmm. But um, ours already came with it. So we'll, when you click on the link below, that's the one you'll get. So yeah, guys, we are so excited. We've had it about a week. It's been working flawlessly. It we has. did have to figure out kind of the settings on the controller. Yep. And as we go along, and even after we get into the new truck, we'll be sharing our experience with it yep. for you guys. Yep. I'll be doing some videos on the control unit. Uh, it's really easy to use and set up and yeah. set your temperatures and all that. So. Yeah, and if you guys have any questions for us on the, on the unit, how we did the install, or if you got one and you need questions answered, uh, we're happy to help as much as we can. Yep. Leave it down in the comments, email us whatever you want to do to contact us. Cool. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it was a long one, but we wanted to be as detailed as possible for you guys. Yeah. Thank you as always for watching and subscribing. And until our next video. Peace, love, and expediting.